One of the problems in the modern beekeeping era is a fungus that infect honeybee gut cells, the microsporidium nosema serrani. Honeybee researchers hypothesized that stimulating the gut microbiome using pre- and probiotics could interfere with the life cycle of this disturbing honeybee enemy. Can the use of pre- and probiotics manipulate the gut ecosystem to help honeybees to fight nosema infection? The fungus Nosema serrani is an obligate intracellular parasite infecting cells in the digestive tract and can have a number of detrimental effects on honeybees apes mellifera, including the generation of the hypopharyngeal glands, the generation of the midgut epithelium, reduction of nutrient absorption and increasing of energetic stress, immunosuppression, early onset of foraging behavior, decreased homing and orientation, and decreased lifespan and food storage in honeybee colonies. The important role that gut microorganisms play in digestive health, as well as overall honeybee health and immunity may provide a means to help manage Nosema serrani infections. The honeybee gut microbiome is comprised of a large variety of bacteria, including numerous lactic acid bacteria with the genera Lactobacillus, as well as bacteria in the genus Bifidobacterium. The gut microbiota protects honeybees from pathogen infections by lowering the pH, competing with pathogens for nutrients and space, and producing organic acids, antimicrobial peptides, and bacteriocins. Nourishing and enhancing this community of microorganisms through supplementation with prebiotics and probiotics may help reduce Nosema serrani infections. Prebiotics are non-digestible carbohydrates and food ingredients that have been shown to increase the growth and metabolic activity of the microorganisms found in the alimentary tract, meaning that they are not food for honeybees, they are food for the bacteria inside the honeybee gut. Probiotics are living organisms that are ingested with the goal of altering the gut microbiome by increasing beneficial microbes and reducing pathogenic species. Probiotics are believed to help prevent or treat unbalanced microfauna resulting from disease or antibiotics. There is evidence in the scientific literature about the benefits and also problems of giving pre- and probiotics to honeybees. I will cover many of them in future videos. Today's video is about a successful case that I want your opinion about it. In February of 2021, a group of researchers from the Ontario Beekeepers Association Technology Transfer Program and the School of Environmental Sciences at the University of Guelph in Canada, led by Dr. Daniel Borgers, published a study where they look at the role of pre- and probiotics in the dynamics of Nosema serrani infection in laboratory conditions. After infecting honeybees with Nosema serrani spores in the laboratory, the researchers fed the bees with different pre- and probiotics and evaluate mortality in the total number of spores per bee after 16 days. The prebiotics chosen were Acacia gum, Inulin, and Fructo oligosaccharide, compounds that you can easily find on any vitamins and supplement stores. And the probiotics chosen were Protexin concentrate single strain, Protexin concentrate multiple strains, and Vetofarm Probiotic, which is composed with the same bacteria composition of protexin concentrate multiple strain, but with a higher concentration. In a screening test, comparing with the positive control group that reached an infection rate of 1.7 times 10 to the 7 spores per bee, Acacia gum, protexin concentrate single strain, protexin concentrate multi strain, and fructo oligosaccharide treatments resulted in significantly lower spore numbers. Acacia gum reduced 67%, protexin concentrate single strain reduced 59%, protexin concentrate multi strain reduced 34% and fructo oligosaccharide reduced 31% of nosema spores. The results look very promising, especially in respect of acacia gum. However, 
When the researchers looked at the mortality rate, they found that acacia gum had a significant increase in mortality. About 62% of the bees died consuming the prebiotic compared with 7-7% to found in the control groups. All other products did not show significant mortality differences compared with the controls. Therefore, the researchers decided to exclude acacia gum from further experiments. After the preliminary screening, researchers decided to look what is the best dosage to get the beneficial effect. Vetafarm Probiotic showed that only 2.5 mg per ml resulted in a significantly lower number of spores compared with the controls, but when we increased the dosage, the effect was gone. For Protexin single strain, all dosages result in a significantly lower count of nosema spores compared with the controls. However, for Protexin multi-strain, the positive significant results observed in the screening experiment using 0.25 mg per ml fell apart when more doses were tested, allowing for more powerful statistics analysis. When the researchers compared the survival data from the two probiotics that show positive results with spore counts in previous experiments, both products, Vetafarm Probiotic in green and Protexin Concentrate Single Strain in purple, survived longer when compared with the bees infected with Nosema serrani alone, show it in red here. Interestingly, Protexin Concentrate Single Strain Survival Ship was better than the negative controls which were bees not infected with Nosema serrani at all. This whole experiment here is a clear demonstration of the variability that frequently happens in beekeeping, sometimes increasing the dosage of something assuming it will amplify the results ends up reversing the expected results. And, sometimes one organism alone is better than the same organism combined with multiple others. In a single study like this one, in laboratory controlled conditions, you could clearly see that details matter. Imagine how many different scenarios you're gonna face in a real beekeeping operation where you cannot control most of the variables. For example, I use probiotics from Strong Microbials, an established brand of probiotics for honeybees on two occasions. The first time, I could not find any difference in my bees. However, the second time, in a different location with different beekeeping procedures, I got a very nice significant beneficial results comparing with the control bees not treated with the probiotics. There is a lot of research to be done for us to know exactly when and in what conditions probiotics can help the bees. As I mentioned before, I will bring other research articles about probiotics on future videos. And if you want to know in advance which videos I'm making, please consider support me on Patreon, where I post more content about bees and interact with supporters on a personal level. If you like this video, you will love this one right here. Thanks for watching. Inside the Hive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week.